Yeah, sorry, I had to start over again. Yes, I just got this from UPS 30 minutes ago. I have not touched, I have not really touched it yet. I haven't used it. You can see it's brand new. Um, I haven't tested it out. I just got it 30 minutes ago. And I got this. This is for this one. This one is no longer brand new. This, this is like, what, two weeks old, three weeks old. I have a second one just like it, exactly like it. Same box, same, same, the same thing. I should be putting this one right here. But last night when I did that other one, that uh, other video, I did put, uh, what do you call it? I did put, you can see I got a picture of it on my laptop computer. It's, it's this one right here. Uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, I was saying, on that video I did last night at night time, when I had the flashlight on. This, these guns, I said it already. They don't like Daisy cartridges. They hit them. I don't know about yours. I don't know about your Springfield Armor XDE, but the thing is, they hate Daisies, man. Use a Crossman. If you want to get by with performance and functional, functional, what, how do you pronounce it? Functional ability or something, you know, since my, I can't roll my tongue so fast. Um, start out with a crossman and put it in there. Because last night, I got like three to four magazine uses out of it. And I'm still I haven't done it. I'm not, I'm not finished yet. I think this one is supposed to expire, but I couldn't finish it because it was too dark and I didn't feel too good. It was too scary out there. And there was a lot of pine trees and bushes behind in front of me and I can't see what's in there. So I got pretty scared and I had to leave. But the thing is, if you have, not only that, when I came back to it, all right, the first time when I used it three days before now, it was it was a crossman in there. <clears throat> it didn't give no problems at all. It didn't jam. It didn't shoot poor. It did not fail. It didn't do nothing else. It just kept shooting and shooting and shooting, and that's it. It functioned 100%. But when I stuck the daisies in there, it messed up so bad. It shot four shots maybe three to four shots. The rest of them, it could not shoot. The BBs actually got stuck in here. As they didn't really get stuck. I'll tell you what the problem is, what I think the problem is. They were, they were loaded all the way down to right here. When I started using, all right, when I started using it, it started from the bottom and stopped right there. I kept firing shots, pop, pop, pop. I didn't hear nothing coming out. I'll tell you why it got stuck. When the Daisy cartridges are in this one, in this magazine, the valve back here, it gets clogged. Because with Daisy's, as soon as I fired, you notice that the gas hit me in the face. Like a lot of white gas, a lot of CO2, um, I don't know what you call it. A lot of Freon inside it. It hit me in the face all the time, every time I fire my first shot. Every time I put a fresh Daisy CO2 in there, it hits, the gas hit me in the face, but whenever I shoot it, when I fire it, the gas will come out the back of the pistol and it hit me in the face. And then after that, you fire one, two, three, maybe four, and then it stops. I mean, it will keep shooting, but you won't hear any BBs coming out. You could shoot the biggest side of the barrel, I mean, uh, 
what do you call it, the bucket. And if you don't hear that ting or what that that clock or whatever, that's it. And not and when you take it out and you look at it, you see them all stacked all the way down here. So that means it's stuck. It's not shooting out the BBs. So I think I know what the problem is. Those daisy cartridges, they're packed with a lot of fluids. And as soon as you use it, as soon as you give it a fresh start, it starts to build up inside the valve right here. I think they said the blowback system is inside the pistol. I think this is the real blowback side. I think the valve is all in this one spot because you cannot function. This gun cannot function. Hold on a second. It cannot function without that. So the valve is definitely right here. The valve is right here. The firing pin or the slider pin, well, since it's not a real pistol, a regular firearm, the, f the, the slider pin that hits the back of this, um, it's supposed to release and shoot the BBs out here. Release pressure from the CO2. So I'm thinking that Daisy cartridge was so packed with extra fluids that it stopped, it blocked out the valves so it can't shoot out. You see, I solved that problem. I'm thinking that's what it is. But when you use a car, uh, a Crossman cartridge and put in there, it's got less liquids and fluids in there. And not only that, the Daisies only last on two magazines. And the Crossmans, they, they last on about three to four magazines. That's what's good about it. And not to mention, there's something else strange about these um, Springfield armories. It's strange, but it's a good thing for me. The good part is it can dish out some kind of raw power at an unusual moment. Like it can punch, it can punch much harder than this Night Stalker. This is what, 420 feet? And this is 380. Subtract 380 from 420, let me see, 80. 90, 100, 10, 20. You're looking at 40 feet stronger and 40 feet weaker. So this can dish out more power than this one and that power line for 550, 501, which goes 430. It can dish out more power than both of those. You could say, I don't know, I'm just guessing, but... One time I saw this one. All right, I tried all three of them. This one, that one, and the third one, the Daisy Power Line. I tried, I think I tried this one first, and I passed two holes right through that plastic um, jug container. What do you call it? The, the Tide container, the Tide jug, the detergent jug. It ripped a hole through both sides. The rest of them couldn't do it. This one couldn't do it. I think maybe it's because the slider is a little bit heavier and bigger. So it hits the valve a little bit harder. And I'm using a better cartridge anyways. So that will make it better. So I'm thinking maybe the strongest CO2 pistol might be this one for some strange reason. I don't know. I could be wrong. But then again, you have this one, which I got in the UPS mail just now, about 45 minutes ago. I haven't tried this one yet. I haven't tried this one in my entire life. This is my first um, full auto blowback pistol. But only pistol only. I do have the Umrex Steel Storm. It goes 430 feet. It's an M4. It goes 480. Uh, 30 feet per second. I still have it. It's at my mom's house right now. It's about a thousand feet away from me. I had that sitting around for four years, three to four years. It's not going to get rusty, but I have it hidden somewhere. I'll try and see if I could re recover that, and maybe I'll do a video on that one. I haven't used it in four years because I was too busy, you know, doing something else. I was too busy working, so... Um, 
I could say is that I did like this gun more than all of them, but now I'm starting to like this one a little better. But I still like this one as much. I want to see this one. I really kind of like this one the most, but I also got a crush on this one too. I like this one. But it seemed like what the hell? it seemed like I solved the problem to this one. Because every time I put a Crossman CO2 in this Springfield Army, I don't experience anything. I did not experience one interference whatsoever. Oh, and here's here's another important thing. Um, whenever you're about to shoot, all right, let me start off this way. When I went to, when I went to Air Venturia in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, what do they call it, Salon, Ohio? Yeah, Cleveland, the main headquarters where this gun originates. I went there in person, and the lady in charge of these pistols, she said, um, of course, I already know that. I already know the answer to that. I told her, when you rest your finger on the trigger and then you back off, you spit the BBs out. And you could keep doing it. One, two, three, four, five. And you could, you could keep dumping BBs out as much as you want. That's another way of emptying the magazine if you want. You feel like you want to, instead of you taking the, instead of you taking the magazine cartridge out of the gun, you could leave it in there. Well, you know what? It's not going to go off. I don't think so. Let me try it. It's already pressurized. Yeah, like this. One, two, three, four, five. And you could dump them out. You could dump the entire cartridge out. You don't have to worry about anything left in there. Because I already tried that. But the thing is, um, I found out once you press it, and you feel that, that, that uh, rub, you feel that solid rub, once you get past it and you keep pressing without backing off, it won't dump out. And I'm not gonna do it right here. Then then you can fire it. But if you press it, if you, it's like if you tap on it and then you release it, yes, it's gonna dump out. So that's that's the second that's the second problem that I solved. And the third thing she said. When you press on it and back off, yeah, when you press it, I already, I already know that. I told her that already. She, she's saying the same thing twice. All right. I know the third thing, the third problem that I solved on this gun, these guns or this gun, is it hates oil. It not only hates daisy cartridges, it hates oil. Let me go ahead and see if I can. Hold on a second. Um, another thing is my first mistake or my first experience is try not to put oil into Try not to go down in here and over here, especially over here. You know why? Because this um, switch right here, it does not pop back up. And as a matter of fact, hold on a second. Maybe I might be wrong about that. I think while you're firing the gun, it pops up and it holds the slider open. Right. Be aware of that. I think... I guess this is how I fixed it. I soaked it in uh, I, I soaked it in water. Better yet, I sprayed it with soap. I saturated it with soap, you know, like a spray. Then I soak it in water for like an hour. Then pull it back out, and then <laughs> then I blow dry it. And then I would use some motor oil and saturate the seal back here and the one inside the front which is plastic white you can't see it though but it's somewhere it's like 
I don't know, it's hard to explain. Oh yeah, that's right. I got the magazine. You should be able to see it. The seal back there is black and the one up inside behind the barrel is white, plastic white. It's, it's rubber. It's, it could be, um, I don't know, Teflon or whatever. Yeah, oil that because you don't want to leave it dry if you put water in it. I soaked it in water. Almost four inches all the way to the bottom of the sink. So it works 100% perfect in its own way. When I say it's in its own way, it still has... It has its own weakness, but it shoots regular. It shoots constantly. I did not get one inch of interference. It almost did a little better than this sometimes. Sometimes that one gets kind of stuck once in a while. Or oh, it gets stuck because the, there's not enough CO2 in it. Right. You might you might think you want to size up on me on that issue. I, I have an answer for it. It's true. But I don't think this gun has that problem. This one has it. This one will get stuck earlier before it runs out. And then you have to let it rest. That's all of them. Yeah, of course. They're going to get kind of stuck because you're shooting too fast. Because you're dropping the pressure. So, I think this one gets stuck a little bit faster before it gets run out. Like, let's say... um. This could last maybe, um, I'm, guess, I'm guessing maybe six magazines or seven. But before it, before it runs out, it kind of gets stuck. It doesn't fire anything. So you got to let it rest, rest for like three minutes, two minutes, I don't know. And then when you start shooting it, then you could hear the BBs come out and smack the container. But this... I don't recall running into any problems with this one. Maybe I do. I don't know. I think this one, it, yeah, it will get stuck when it's, it will get kind of stuck when it's, you know, weak. But to tell you the truth, the Crossman's, as of right now, is the best CO2 capsule to use with the XD, the Springfield Armor. It's the best capsule. I don't know yet, but like I said last night, Maybe the Umarex might be the best one. I don't know. Maybe it's compatible. I don't know. Maybe some other brand is better. But as of right now, Crossman's are strictly for this gun in my case. So, um, I had the grease with it. I had the grease that goes with it. It's in the bag over there. I don't feel like putting it up. Still, all right. That lady at uh, Air Venturi, she said, Silicone oil or silicone liquid is, is good for these guns. It's the best. It's recommended. So that's why I ordered it. So I got all three of these. This, that, and the duffel bag over there. Just now about an hour ago. So as of right now, my last use of this one was last night and the night before that, two days in a row. It only gave problems when I put the daisy in there. So as of right now, crossmen's are for me. me All right, that's about three things that I saw for this gun so far. As of right now, I don't have no problems with it. It's perfect. It's 100% perfect. The only weakness that I can't stand about this, they say that it's natural for it to spit out BBs when you tap the trigger. <laughs> it's like, I, I, don't, I don't really understand why, why they make them guns like this, but I don't know. I never heard of such pistol doing that. But if it has a weakness, I mean, like if it, you know, if it came like that, it's all good. It's, it's, that's, that's not going to mess with me. You know, I can handle that. It's, you know, if it's different, it's different. But above all, yes, it's in 100% perfect condition. This one right here is like, no, it's, it's the same age as this one. I've been using this one the most. But I would say this, this is about three weeks old. Close to a month, probably a month old. All of them are a month old. 
but this one it hasn't been used yet i'll do a review on that one but as of right now i'm not in the mood to leave this house i mean this uh motel right now so it's like i'm busy trying to take care of myself <sighs> Let me see, I got three things to say about that. As of right now, I don't have to use this. This gun is like, it's ready to go. It's in perfect shape. All I did was just put Pell gun on and that. And I did put some grease um, on this this part right here. Because when, when, it's loaded with, uh, when it's loaded with BBs in here, this will get kind of stuck when you pull the trigger. You see, you slide this up in there. I forgot that that prong of that hook goes forward and it pushes this. It push the BBs into the into the barrel up in there. And then it pushes it back so the rest of them can come up and then repeat the same cycle. I would say oil, no, no, not oil, excuse me. Put grease right here. Hold on, let me show you. Silicone grease, silicone oil. What is it? Hill. What does it say? Uh, whatever. It's hill oil. It's probably made in the UK. Yeah, both of them are. Both of them are related. They're, they're the same exact brand, but different. Different formula, different, uh, you know. So it's like I did use this on top of this right here so it can slide better because it gets kind of, it feels rusty. That's, that's what's making the trigger um, spit the BBs out like that. I don't, I don't think I really have a definite answer to that, but this thing right here, it will get kind of stuck. So you might want to put some grease on it. But other than that, just use the cross and the CO2 and that will solve most of your problems. Almost all your problems. You don't have to worry about nothing. But if you want to keep your gun in shape and you like it so much and you're going to use it heavy and excessively, yes. Please use a grease. And also please use this. I guess maybe you can use this and put it on the CO2 cartridge. Instead of using the Pell gun oil. Because Pell gun oils are usually made for crossmen, but... Um, Pyramid Air and Air Venturi or whatever. They said a crossman is recommended for this. Or maybe motor oil, synthetic motor oil. Yes, that's also allowed. I got 10W30 synthetic Valvoline inside of that bag over there. Yes, you could use that. You shouldn't really mess with it. But this is recommended. But, you know... Stick with a crossman. You won't have no problems. That one, that one dude that did a review, he said that his gun messed up so bad. He described the same exact situation. Um, excuse me, the same, the same problem as as mine. And I'm saying the same thing as his. So I guess if y'all want to solve the problems with these Springfield armies, use strictly crossman for right now. All right, um, it's going on to 24 minutes. I think I'll switch over to this one. I don't know if I'm gonna do two of them at one time, but the main part of this video is strictly that gun, so I'll just leave it at that. Oh, let me, um, I don't know if I wanna do this, but this other guy was talking about the the problem about these guns. He said they're very, what, picky or finicky or something. Yeah, he was telling the truth. They jam once or twice. Well, I haven't had that problem once since I used a Crossman CO2 cartridge. Did it ever jam once since 
I burned out, let's say if I burned out um, three to four magazines, I don't recall that because I used it two and two days in a row. I never had a problem. Craftsmen's are a lot better. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the grease. I don't know. Whatever I did to it, it works a lot better. Anyways, I'm going to cut this video. I'm going to switch to something else. All right, I'll check you all later.